Hi, this is Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what I consider a hot topic in junk journals and that is the issue of copyright. I am not a copyright lawyer and I am not going into the crazy in-depth stuff, maybe in another video when I've done a whole lot more research and I have a few more gray hairs. Um, I might have one right now, but you know, when I have 20 or 30 gray hairs, then um, maybe I'll be wise enough to delve into that. But for right now, we are just going to deal with a magic year and that year is 1922. Most of you already know this. However, I do have a lot of subscribers who ask me all the time. So I thought if I just gave you this easy and simple thing to remember, write it down, 1922. After the year 1922, the United States copyright laws were uh, put into place and um, they've changed multiple times since then, which is why it is so confusing if you deal with anything after the year 1922. Good news for us is that in January of 2019, uh, 1923 will be available in the public domain. But don't get confused with that right now. Um, right now, we're just talking about 1922 and before. Anything published 1922 or before is in the public domain. No one can claim a right to it. You have as much right to it as I do. So you can use those images um, in your journals or to sell ephemera or things like that. So I want to show you a couple different examples, um, kind of go through the thought, my thought process. All right, so maybe you're at an estate sale and you find a book like this and it is gorgeous and it looks old. So it's old. You should be able to use it, right? Don't just assume. Look at these beautiful music pages. Maybe you don't want to, well, look at that. I already think I ripped a page out. But say you don't want to rip a page out and you want to make copies of it and put them in your journals because maybe you're doing a whole bunch of Easter journals and you want this page in each journal. Can you do that? You need to look for the copyright date at the beginning of the book. And it says right here, copyright 1917. That's before 1922. So this book has no copyright attached to it. There is no, um, no one can claim a right to it. You can copy away, sell away, do whatever you want with it, okay? So say you also picked up this book. I mean, do they look similar? Similar um, type of cover. They both look old. You should be able to use this one, right? Again, let's look for the copyright. And it says copyright 1935. So you can use you can use the actual when you purchase a book, when you own a book, you own these pages to use each page. But once you've used it, you've used it. So um, if it's a 1935 book, then you're not gonna want to use. Um, copy it. That would be illegal. You don't own the right to copy. Okay. Um, so I already started making notes on this. Okay. So let's talk about Pinterest and Google and the people who say, oh, I found an image off of Google and I just had to put it in my journal. I found this image on Pinterest. Okay. We need to do a lot more research than that. We can't just look on Pinterest and say, oh, that's an old image. Um, yeah, I'm going to use that. No, we have to know more about it. And that takes a lot of more research. These are paintings, uh, printed paintings from Emile Vernon. And uh, he, pr he did these in the 1800s. So they're before 1922. So we're free to use these. I just have these here for you to look at and just kind of an example. But um, you might see this image right here on Pinterest and say, it looks old, I wanna use it. But you don't know, you know, you don't know anything about it. Sometimes Pinterest is nice and underneath it will say, you, you know, someone would have already written where they found it. It might say Emil Vernon 18 whatever. And then you're like, oh, okay, yay, I can use it. A lot of times it just says, beautiful painting of girl with flowers. That doesn't help you at all. So I want to give you a couple tips to do a little bit of internet research to find out. This is a frustrating, long, dark, lonely, scary road. So um, if you have anxiety issues, don't go down it. <laughs> but if you are brave and you feel like charging the dragon of the internet, I'll show you a couple things you can do. Um, I already wrote on here, but on Pinterest, um, in one of the corners, it might be here, it might be up here, there's a white little like rounded um, square. And if you click on that, it will take you to a page where you can see all of the visually similar images on Pinterest. A lot of times you'll see this image a couple times because multiple people pinned it or wrote different descriptions. They were pinned from different sites. Sometimes under one of those, it will give you a clue. It will say, Emile Vernon, okay, now you know um, who painted it, but you don't know the year. So then you can go over to Google and you can type that in. And you can find out 
when he lived. If he died before 1922, then he obviously, uh, everything he did is in the public domain. If he died um, after 1922, but he was born before it, and you just have to do a little bit more research. When was he painting? When were these paintings painted? F try to find a website that tells you um, more about when these paintings yeah. were um done. If you can't find more visually similar images on Pinterest, you can go to a website called Tin Eye and you can either copy the URL where you found this. So when this is up on your screen, up in the www box, if you paste that and then copy it when you're on this website, or if you save this image to your computer and then upload it to Tin Eye, Tin Eye will tell you everywhere on the internet where it is. Maybe you can hunt something down that way. But like I said, dark, long, low, uh, lonely, scary road. <laughs> um, I enjoy doing it, but don't get your heart set on using a specific image that you find because um, you may or may not be able to track it down in a timely manner. So what I like to do sometimes is when I'm just playing on Pinterest and I find things I think I might be able to use, I pin them to a board on my Pinterest. And then when I wanna use it, I go back and do the research later. So um, now let's talk about a couple of different websites where you can go and use stuff and not worry about it. So some places that I like to go to find images are Project Gutenberg. Now again, this isn't really a lonely, scary, dark road, but it is a, you need time. You can't necessarily just go there and find something right away. They do have a search engine, but there are so many books. And if, even if you're searching something like flowers, you might come across books that are just text and text and text and text of flowers. And finding one that has images and images you like might take a little bit longer. Um, archive.org, treasure trove, treasure trove. And what's really nice about this one, um, see, Patrick Gutenberg only puts ones that are in the public domain. Archive.org might have a few that are not in the public domain, but when you're on the main page for the book, it tells you, like, not in copyright, so you know. Um, the one I really want to talk about today is the Biodiversity Heritage Library on Flickr. And we're going to come over to my computer. Um, and, oops, you see my messy, messy everything and my notes, and I lost my place, and all of that fun stuff. Okay, so here we are, one of my favorite sites on the web. Here's the URL, the Biodiversity Heritage Library on Flickr. Now, you just have to look when you click your images, so um, you can also search. Like, let's say, let's click the search, and let's say we want to search for dragonfly. Now these are all just nature themes, so plants, animals, stuff like that, okay? All right, so here's all the dragonflies, um, quite a few. And to say if we're making a dragonfly journal and we want to use this image, we're gonna click on it. Then if you scroll down, you're gonna see more information about it right here, 1806. So that's in the public domain. If you look over here, it says some rights reserved, but <laughs> this is just saying they wanna be attributed um, they really can't necessarily legally say that because it is in uh, 1806, so nobody owns this image. It's in the public domain. But if you click on that, it's going to say, yes, you can, um, the little man here, you are free to share it, adapt it, even commercially, um, you know, free cultural approved for works, blah, blah, blah. So, um, that's what that means there. And then when you download it, you go over here to the little arrow and you can download square, small, medium, large, original. I always go with the original so that I have the um, best size and that way I can print it in more um, sizes and have a clearer, crisper image. So let's go back here uh, where we have dragonfly and we are going to search for flower. Very generic, but let's say we're doing a um, journal that is yellow themed. So we're going to click yellow and it's going to pull out the flowers that are yellow here. If my computer decides it wants to do that. There we go. All right. So here you go. Really nice and beautiful. And if you want to use this one, we're going to click on it. It's going to load it. And then as we look down here, 1896 to 1907 right here. So it's in the public domain. And again, this one just means they wanted to be credited. The Biodiversity Heritage Library wanted you to say, oh, you got it from me. We scanned it and uploaded it at the AS. They can't 
legally you're not going to get in trouble for that because they don't own it. It's always nice to say where you get things if, you know, you want to. But anyway, so I just thought that you would enjoy seeing that and learning a little bit about the public domain. If you have any, I'm going to bring you back over here. Oh, no, look at all the mess you see. If you um, have any more questions, then please leave comments below. I will try to answer them. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to know all the crazy things. But, um, yeah. So, I just thought I would leave that out there. And I hope that helped a lot of you. If you're selling journals, please be careful to not just take any image or copy any pages in books. Um, try to follow <laughs> this law here. And that's why a lot of our journals are vintage because that magic year of 1922. If you like more modern, okay, like see this, I don't know if you can see it, the background printed on here. This is not um, in the public domain. I purchased this off of Etsy, but, but <laughs> she allows commercial use. So that's another thing. If you wanna purchase other images um, that aren't in the public domain, just check and see. So if you're on Etsy and um, if you've been following my Etsy archeology span series, you will see many, many, many shops where you can buy things from. Sorry, my boys are loud in the background. Um, she allows for commercial use and you can just check that in her policies or in the policies of someone on Etsy. If you're not sure, just send them a message and say, do you allow commercial use? I make, I sell journals, is this okay? Most of the time they say yes. A lot of times they'd like you to put the shop link in the description box, which is only fair to try to do that if you possibly can. So I hope you all have a lovely day. I hope that this um, sparked some interest in the public domain and in what you can and can't use. I hope it gave you a couple of resources. Check all these out when you have time. It will last you a lifetime. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful day.